Hi there, welcome to the Oxford Union. I'm joined today by uh, Kate Moss. Um, so, Kate. Okay. Um, not the model. Not the you model. You have to say that, Susie. Right, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, so, why writing? That's my first question. <laughs> why writing? Why writing? How long have we got? Yeah. Um, I think it's just that sense of wanting to tell stories. It sounds like a terrible cliche. But I didn't set out to be a writer. I didn't always think I was going to be a writer. I thought I was going to be a violinist, actually. Right. Um, and I came to Oxford, and when I left, it was that sense of, you know what, the only thing that I really know is that it, I'd like it to be something to do with books. So I was a publisher, and then I published lots of other writers. And then the, the book that I wanted to read wasn't around at a particular point. And a friend of mine who was an agent said, why don't you just stop moaning and writing? I went, OK, I will. And then suddenly I was a writer. Didn't feel like one until book number five, actually. Right. But it's that really. It's just that in the end, telling stories, listening to stories, sharing stories, it doesn't get much better than that. Okay. And secondly, why do you think Labyrinth was so successful? <laughs> um, I think Labyrinth was so successful for a range of reasons. Um, I'd love to say that it's because of the text only, but it never is with publishing. Publishing is always about serendipity, about being in the right place at the right time, about somebody else but possibly having created your audience for you. So I have no doubt that coming after the Da Vinci Code meant that there was an appetite for historically based quest stories, slightly supernatural stories. And one of the things that the Dan Brown book did was released many men back to reading novels, which actually mostly men weren't reading that many novels at that time. And I inherited a lot of that audience, no doubt about it. Secondly, I think that people like to think about very serious issues. Love, what matters, what is religion, your relationship with the land, what history means, um, how we're manipulated by it, how we manipulate it. But sometimes you don't want to look at any of those things in your own time, in your own context. But once you remove them into a historical context, and Labyrinth is a 13th century novel, it's possible to enjoy a story, connect with characters, but at a different level, think about the things that really matter to us now. And that's why historical fiction, I think, is so popular. All right, excellent. And finally, what do you think of the Oxford Union? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen a lot of these films, you see. The Union. Um, it, it's a very odd thing to be here because um, mm. I had a wonderful time in Oxford, um, but I never came in, oh. not once. Um, and it was, I came a bit early up to Oxford today and walked around, and it felt like this was the right time to come into the Oxford Union. And so all those sort of ghosts of the men in the black, you know, black bow ties and mm. everything on the walls, um, now I feel an affection for those sorts of photographs and feel that I belong in those photographs and as part of that. When I was 18, I felt very much on the outside of all of that. So the fact that this is my first visit feels like the time has come. Now I'm 50, I'm back. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.